we're going to Cursed Hollow. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be our next battleground. So if Team Gluck can rally once more, guess what our final map would be? It's <laughs> Game 7 Praxis. The dream is alive. It could happen. <laughs> it could be a thing. Oh, man. But if not, if Trog can take this game, then they will become an HGC professional team in HGC Korea, and they will be sending your luck down to the Open Division, where they would have to try again mm. in six months in one form or another. And Gluck has been in the Pro Division for two phases now, right? I believe so. Yeah. I will double-check that, but I believe so. Because I think last time they, uh, they made it through the Crucible matches, but this time they're actually endangered. They're looking so good. They've been looking so good, but yet... They're facing the Trogs, man, for no reason. And while D-Dung got massacred yesterday by Supernova, there was Trogs' decision to choose Gluck for a reason. Gluck actually escaped the Crucible last phase. They yep. were able to... Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they came in sixth uh, after losing to... They actually finished ahead of Miracle in the standings, uh -huh. but lost to Miracle in the playoffs. Ah, there we go. And who, and the other team who went down to ace. the Crucible was Felice? Uh, Felice and Ace were the two teams Felice that went to the Crucible. There we go. So uh, Gluck finished the standings in, far, in fifth, but lost the playoffs round one, so sixth, technically. All right, but now they're swimming in uh, dangerous waters, surrounded by trogs and sharks alike. <laughs> oh, I want some art of just, like, trogs with shark fins on their back. <laughs> I wish that was a thing. But, oh, well, so ladies and gentlemen, j just so you know the pressure that is now on Gluck, the Crucible is where the top two teams from the Open Division play against the bottom two teams from their respective Pro Divisions. If the Open Division and Amateur Open Tournament are able to win, they will steal the HDC Pro Division spot away from the Pro Division team. In this case, Trog coming from the Open Division in fifth place. Winning the playoffs Nuts. against the T against Dedun, who have already lost their Crucible, they are now three two up against the Pro Division team Galuck. As Team Galuck finally get their hands on Taranda. Petra, man, Taranda makes it through for the first time in this draft. It had been banned every single time, but finally we see the Priestess of Elune be deployed on Cursed Hollow, and it is by no means a, a terrible map for her. So the Owls can give you great boss control. They can really interrupt someone from channeling the tribute from a long distance. So I would actually say it's one of the better maps for her. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic map for Tarantis. Uh, delays can be absolutely mental. So seeing that picked up is cool to see. And what are we going to see as the next pick? Diablo Zeratul. Oh my. Um, good luck, Trog. That is certainly a first opening. All right. And speaking of boss control, guess who's the absolute master? It is Hanzo. The strong PvE damage allows him to clear those things super fast. They can even go for cheeky invades when they have vision control and see the enemy teams being occupied on some on a different location on the map. But yeah. Zeratul looks like Gluck is always trying to copycat what Trog brought to the table here. They copied yeah. the MyF style. Now they're trying to go for the Zeratul themselves. Is it going to work out, though? Anything you can do, I can do better. Uh, and so we see the Lee Ming band away. That would have been really scary to see with this composition of Gluck, so that's a fair ban by the Trogs. But now Gluck. They have their first choice of tank. Probably mm -hmm. banning out a Garrosh or... Uh, oh, we got already banned out. So banning out Muradin would be pretty dope here. Or, uh, t or a uh, Johanna. Malthiel is the ban. Okay, Malthiel here banned... Urel available, Blaze available, still a couple of scary soul laners, uh, you know, at their disposal. I think I would probably prefer Urel over Blaze. However, when there's a bunker against Zeratul, that could actually be a lifesaver. Li Ming is banned, by the way, so are we going to see that Anubarak coming in with that infamous cocoon? Without the Disintegrate, there's no major tool to really pop it immediately. Noob into Diablo, it could happen. It's risky because the new ball get blown risky, up. Yeah. The double isolation comp can just be insane. You could technically have triple isolation because you have cocoon, <laughs> yeah. the uh, cocoon, the, the the containment disc, and actual isolation. True. So, man, I don't know. This is I. I still think a noob is too risky because the just he's gonna detonate. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking more of a Muradin or a Johanna personally, but we'll see. Jaina. And Yorel, this is the most 
please pick a noob into worst pick I have ever seen. A noob rank, in my opinion, is no longer an option. You have armor reduction on the side of Taronda, Diablo oh slamming into the wall, and a Jaina who can burst down a noob rank pretty hard. Uh, yeah, I'm glad with the Muradin pick. Probably out of all the warriors available, still the most survivable one. But Tetra, yeah. look at the Wombo combo potential for Team Gluck. VP, maybe even Apocalypse, maybe even a Ring of Frost. Ah, oh, man, that's... That's oh, rough. Oh, oh, oh. That's real rough. There's so much combos. I mean, you could even chuck a Starfall in that if you're really oh, wide open. But right now, the synergy and the burst potential that we're seeing here from uh, that we're seeing here from Team Galak has me severely concerned. Map control, globals, of course. The uh, the Dahaka is going to be a pretty big deal for uh, the Trogs, but I'm nervous for. Very All right. Nervous. We were nervous before, though, on Towers of Doom as well, when they had that super hard to execute team comp for the Team Trogs, but they made us believe I'm, in them. I'm more nervous this game, by a long okay. way. They don't have as many counterplays. It's such as a standard draft with a little bit of global. I am, I am worried about them. Good thing, good news for Team Trog. If uh, Team Gluck doesn't use their heroic abilities wisely and on point diligently, then I think they're going to be just fine. But if they get caught in a three, four man VP, then the combos might be real. So let's see what Team Gluck is going to do. Are they even going for this heavy wombo combo style or are they going for something like, let's say, um, a lightning breath and maybe a water elemental to keep enemy heroes a little bit more under control against a Maiev? That's certainly not a terrible idea. Yeah, possibilities there. They could absolutely go for that. It's got so it's got great chase control, so mm -hmm. it's good for Hanzo as well. Was there a um, so, Yeah, the potential is there. We will have to see. Zeratul starting off with the standard cleave build. You can adjust into the Might of Nerathine build, but I think I'm just getting hung up on that. You usually want Shadow Hunter if you're doing that for the cooldown reduction, yeah. so more for the potential burst more often. So likely sticking with the sta more standard cleave build. I guess this composition where everyone's going to want to group up for Aegis, it makes much more sense. And while I didn't like, why I didn't always like, oh, hold that thought, Jackpot in trouble, surrounded I... by four enemy heroes, there's no way he can escape that, right? He used all of his so... essence, he used his burrow too, he's just trying to buy time for White Man. Speed boost? Oh, White Man doesn't, White Man doesn't even bother. Just yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm here. I'll tell your family, but there's nothing I can do about this. Uh, she's going to have to hold the lane for the moment, as Maiev is doing a mercenary camp. She can do this with the right micro. She's doing pretty okay for the moment, but it's going to get pretty close, actually. Oh, no, please. Oh, no, please. Oh, Angel. You must have messed up the micro at some point, because White Maiev uh, Maie yeah. can do that solo. But if you take too much damage, you have to micro using the bursaries to body block each other. He must have taken too much damage at one point during that rotation. Yeah, Bruises one, my F zero, but she will be back because she can heal. That's cheating according to the mercenary's point of view. But hey, life isn't fair in the Nexus. Yeah, fuck, he comes back with full hit points. <laughs> oh, where's your face? Mercenary's like, what? what? Now? I didn't <laughs> sign up for that. <laughs> Uh, finally, the Murtaugh camp is going to go down. My, uh, Tarada did see that it was being taken, so they do know, and it's going to be pretty comparable timings. All right, so both teams actually going for the Bruiser camp first at roughly the same time here, so uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of a struggle for mid lane control because, once again, like as we said earlier, you don't want to waste those mercenaries, right? You just don't want to take them uh, and then leave them to die. Especially against Jaina, this wizard mercenary can actually be super valuable, but only wishing only white main here currently supporting this push. That is certainly not enough. Yeah, they're finally going to bring up Hanzo, finally getting some reinforcements here. Going to ping in a little bit of damage. Jaina, though, so much wave clear, so much AoE, going to be a bit of a pain here. Finally, we get white main coming in, sorry, Ryev coming in here to assist. Yeah, and uh, back to the white main hero real quick. We weren't always happy with that pick, right, Tetcher? Especially, I think it was game three yeah. where white main disappointed a little bit. But here, I think she is the best possible uh, support to deal with all that burst damage because she offers armor, Scarlet Ages. She just needs to be very careful not to get interrupted before casting. There's not a huge amount of poke outside of Jaina, so there's definitely nice interrupt. Uh, <laughs> definitely an advantage to be gained there because obviously White Main's biggest weakness is out of combat healing, where yeah. she has the clemency, and that's it. So I do agree that I am okay with the White Main here, but 
Scarlet Aegis has got to be on point, and they have to go for intercession. Uh oh, Diablo coming in with that flanking attempt here, putting the Mice actually out of the Blizzard. A little bit of anti synergy there between KCB and Mycin. Angel Wing teleports away using the Spirit of Vengeance, keeps himself safe and alive. First tribute ha did go over to Trog, who have a. They're pretty even on experience, despite mm -hmm. sending three people down to uh, gather that tribute. They were able to hold all the lanes. They're also doing a good job dealing with those mercenaries. So structure-wise, neither of the teams have actually lost a lot of health. These uh, bruiser mercenaries are also being dealt with in the middle pretty handsomely by other teams. So yeah, I mean, if basically both teams uh, maintain that pressure and maintain that speed, I think Trot is going to be very, uh, very much okay with this because they do have the global. So even if they give up the next tribute because let's say Irel is already rotating, then they're just going to get ahead in XP. That's going to be the plan by the looks of it, but we are seeing Gluck bring a lot of people to mid because they want Maya. If you're going to try and blow her up, but no quick fault of the Wardens denies that entire engage. Oh, the vision control is so good right now with Hanzo yeah. just shutting out the Diablo. No surprising attacks here. And we, of course, have to mention the strong synergy between Diablo and between Tyrande. So if those combos land, mm -hmm. we're going to see a dead enemy hero. But so far, they need to happen in the first place. Roxxar is just hovering around here. They're trying to ping him with abilities, but keep missing. <laughs> this is a good angle. The Harker's not here, obviously. So current is the 5v4. Yep. But both teams just dancing around. The longer this goes on, the better it is for the Trox, obviously. They're getting multiple lanes versus the XP. Yeah. But Maev takes a fair amount of damage. Angel Wing getting healed by White Man. You can see that extra damage coming in. Comes here comes Hulk. Quick Spirit of Vengeance being used. The Hulk coming in for the other side as well. Going to try and focus onto KCB, who's dropping low. But Isaac getting focused down by Zeratul. The concession here comes through as well. The intercession, sorry, with a good cleanse emerging. He survives for now. Dehaka used all the essence that he had, but still ends up falling. So a big uh, setback here for the team of Team Trogs and Gluck. The yeah, icing on the cake here, of course, that tribute, but they also got a beautiful team fight. That's exactly what we were talking about, Tetra. The longer the team fight go, um, the more a white wind is going to struggle. She only has clemency. She only has yeah. a couple of measly Q heals. Uh, Tyrande, in that regard, is just way better. Exactly. Tyrande is much better in more uh, sustained team fights due to her level 7 especially. Getting that little bit of extra healing on auto attacks. Yeah. Your white main. Keeping herself alive for the moment. But Diablo, you can see he's also adjusted his build. She's he's gone for more bursts. He's Honorable trying to punish fight. this uh, Maiev in the, mm -hmm. uh, when she's trying to be forward. Because obviously she thinks she can just teleport away. Can't do that if you're dead. And it's so hard for Team Truck to keep all the corners under surveillance, right? Because you could see the Zeratul sneaking in from the bottom. Diablo was going for a nice flank from the Ooh. top lane. Yeah, <laughs> that was some good damage. Well, Luckily yeah. for Diablo, there was a minion that he could use to escape from. Yeah, he very nearly got himself a bit too, uh, bit too hot water there. But now we're going to see Frog. They're up here again. Both teams are going to have level 10 before the objective spawns. Yeah. Brush Stalker will be up. Uh, sorry, not before. Uh, the positioning of Angel Wing. Angel Wing. Yeah, they're just going to let it happen. Yeah, Angel Wing, nice positioning here. It's a nice little detail to uh, to keep track of. He positioned himself in a way that the Owl would have not landed, so he would have intercepted the Sentinel, um, not getting, you know, not losing any seconds here on this channel. So cute little play by him. The Hacker, chilling in bot lane. Just soaking a little bit of XP. Hanzo begins doing what Hanzo does best. Just Hanzo a white main to start mm -hmm. off with. Very brave, but it's it's feasible. But they're finally going to bring Angel Wing down here. They don't want to just sacrifice all of their health for that risky play. Instead, uh -oh, they're going to bring here. Haka. Roxa is here. Nice drag. Hanzo will finish that off before anyone can actually interrupt. Zeratul moves in. He's, He's, on, the He's on the boy. He's on the platform. Oh, the He's dead. He's on the platform. He's dead. But here comes Diablo. Ring of Frost is good, but the E just keeps them all alive. Bye, Diablo. And that is absolutely brutal. Great E just from White Mane. Shut Whoa! down. Whoa! White Mane. MSG gets an absolute massacre. Double kill. Making it a two for one. A two for two, technically, if you count the Diablo death in their favor. Tribute's up, by the way. No one's dealing with that. That Dark was amazing! Came in like a wrecking ball, that Irel, and it only happened because White May was not careful enough. She stood on the Apocalypse stun, so Irel could still catch her. But of course, it doesn't change the overall positive outcome for Team Truck. They secure themselves not only the curse, but also the boss as it marches towards that bottom lane. Yeah, a cursed boss with pushing in mid lane as well. They have to back up from that, though. The damage output from Glock is still pretty scary. 
Then the boss does go down. Great cleanup by Mycin here. Even with a curse, it doesn't even get damage onto the fort. All right. Oh boy, oh boy. Team Black finds themselves in all sorts of trouble right now. Not only are they going to lose a lot of structures in the top lane. Okay, Urel is defending that, so they're doing a good job here. Once again, a containment disc onto Diablo. It's not meant for a strong team fight oh. initiation. Uh, and Narrow comes through, by the way. Uh, but it's more like a, a stalling tool, I felt like, so they can get this board. Tether not going down here. Very interesting usage of it there. A little bit risky. Some good damage. Nice memento getting some decent AoE damage. As actually Angel Wings chasing forward. Uh -oh. Another Tether is available. Bring across it's no one. The Avalon Fact takes him out of it. Where's the Tether not being used here yet? Getting quick kills here with the Blade Swipe. And they get another double kill here. But now, you, this time, Urel, I think you put a board you can shoot. Yeah, and she has to feel the tongue <laughs> of Dehaka as a punishment. And uh, that was a really good reaction by Jackpot. The stand-in player, by the way, the new kid on the block on the Trog side. They haven't played with him in the uh, Grand Masters uh, uh, Grand Final of the Open Division, but he's doing a mighty good job right now. He's always there when his team needs him, always finds a good timing on the Brush Stalker, and in those team fights as well, he does a good job staying alive, baiting out a couple of cooldowns onto himself every time. Yeah, Angel Wing has been dropping some pretty money fan of knives in this <laughs> fight as well. This is great. Gluck, they still haven't found this one golden combo they want. You talked about it before the game. VP APOC ring, it's all here, but yeah. they have yet to land it effectively, and that's what they really want. Yeah, and if you're Team Trog, then you're just going to spread out a little bit. You're just going to not get caught uh, by the VP, because if you avoid the Zeratul, if you poke him down, if you shut down his element of surprise, and I think you're going to be just fine. Now look at that boss here, hammering on for the top defenses here. The gate will absorb most of the damage, but yeah. it keeps uh, Team Black pinned into that one lane, right? So look at the map dominance that Trox is establishing. Mercenaries left and right, they're spreading out quite nicely, and they're even dealing with that bottom Siege Giant camp before it uh, gets even close to the base of Team Trog. Isaac gonna grab this Vision Tower. Interesting that Scythe-Man, Cyber Sportsman, moved into range of the Vision Tower, mm -hmm. pre it neutralizing. He actually showed himself on the map. I guess if his plan was to come down here and help push, then it's fine, but you could have had a couple extra seconds of lack of vision and information yeah. if you just waited two seconds. The minion wave hadn't arrived yet, you would have still been pretty fine. I think he's basically just on the Alexstrasza Halloween's quest where you need to capture those Vision Towers. <laughs> just wants to get it in. Yeah, as long as he's in range, they dive in, tether onto KCB, but he's tanking through it for the moment. Isaac, though, getting himself isolated, Starfall, dropping decent healing. Isaac needs to drop Avatar here, or he's in serious danger. Avatar, he has to leave over the wall, his team has to disengage as he's not here with them as they're focusing down. Angel Wing is going to get decimated here, he's going to sacrifice himself. Isaac, I'm not so sure about that play. True, you saved yourself, but you exposed your backline, and you just came back only to die eventually, so that was not the best of Muradin plays that we've seen there. He doesn't have stone skin yet. With level 16, sure, he could have done that. He could have survived that with the additional healing, probably. But since they were fighting in a little too crazily before that 16 hit, that was a little bit of a setback here. Still, experience uh, lead is yeah. there for Trog, but they can't afford any more of those reckless plays. Yeah, that did not work out. Their initial engage onto Diablo did not work, and then they hung around too long, fighting for something that was not gonna come. And as such, they got shut down. Mm. With that, Gluck, they're about half a level of experience behind, but Trog is still going to hit level 16 first. All right. Jaina, by the way. Um, okay, for a moment, I, I thought I'd, I'd seen a weird talent there, but it's still Icy Veins, level 13. That makes a lot of sense. Cooldown reduction, mana is saved as well. Very strong. Angel win. Hovers around. They're going to turn this around. Oh, a little early on the scatter arrow there. The health bar they can be the seed many times. They know. They are aware and they are on the way. Muradin wrapping around. He's going to find KCB. They might just abandon this, look for the kill. But so many members, this team's miles away. They're just going to dive on and try and finish this. Oh my god, we're going to see a scuffle. It's time for a party. Catcher, both teams are 16. I don't even know how Gluck managed to close this I gap did. so quickly. Apocalypse goes through, does this to Murden. He escapes just barely, and this fight is still raging on. Isaac survives, Wishing's dropping low as well. Jackpot's in trouble. Assistance, please, team. He brushed Stalker's away. He's oh, going oh, for the oh. tribute. He's abandoned this team, but the boss is leashed. That's all they need. That was a cute little play by Jackpot there, making a split-second decision, realizing that this team fight didn't really go so well. There was no reason for them to actually reinitiate, so he oh went my. for that 
tribute, denying the curse and also saving himself this way. And now guess what, Gluck? Treated. I don't think they should have done that. That mercenary can't cost them the boss. Hanzo, Hanzo, do what you do best. Owl sees quick, it. Quick, Hurry quick. up, Diablo's, Diablo's there. there. Isaac oh. with the point stop. Oh, oh, finish oh, it, finish it, finish it. Right there! They're trying to turn it round! Root onto a KC! They get it! And here comes the oh. Bell! They're trying to steal it, Maroon, and on the point, using the healing sound, trying to keep some light back, while comes in, looks for a great drag on the KCB, killing him off first! Yorel's getting reset after reset! Sorry, White, but uh, Mark F is Yorel is the only one left alive, she goes down! Boss was stolen, but a quadruple kill, technically a quintuple kill, if you count Diablo dying, going over the drop. That is a cool boss, bro, but we just killed four of your dudes, and that was not the best of trades for Team Gluck after all here. That boss is only going to get a tower, maybe two, and that's about it. But look at the experience that Team Truck was able to accumulate. And also, they don't get the curse now because those death timers are a little bit too long. Yes, they are. And right now, Angel Wing moves up. You can see the right now, Trog. They know they have control. They know they can just let Muradin do this. Muradin, even being so audacious, it's a show on the uh, spawn point. If you move into oh. the spawning area Virgil's of the here. tribute, you show for vision. He was trying to do that to like pretend there were more people here than there actually yeah. was. Finally, Gluck begins to move out because everyone's alive. But Trog. Everyone's on the way. Hanzo rotating in from a little bit further away than everyone else. Needs to be careful. Muru, D Diablo is found in this very <laughs> weird rotation. The hacker can obviously brush stalker in. Tetra, that is why we said uh, Tyrande was so strong in this map. Without that long distance interrupt, that would have been uh -oh. their tribute. VP goes down on two uh -oh. people. Muradin is still alive, though. Not the greatest of failure. Ring goes through completely dodged. Dodged by everyone. Containment is out to the back like Dragon Arrow onto two more. Overlord is not getting the healing. The, the, the tether actually gets nothing, but the Aegis is gorgeous. Diablo down, and this is a much cleaner fight, but Mayev still finished off the DJ getting a fantastic turnaround angle. Not over yet. The boss has been punching mice in here a little bit. Which Rudin is gone. Comes in oh my god. Gets one, gets two. Seismen oh, nice helping out there as well. And looks like that is going to be a tribute for Trog oh, after all. Oh my goodness, Jackpot. Hanzo! Hanzo! Finally, a full <laughs> team wipe. That is Ace and Trog. They're going to be able to just push this in. They can grab the tribute on the way out. And that was, I was about to say, this fight looks a lot neater. And then suddenly Jada pops off. Suddenly that happens. This was the messiest fight Trog have done so far, but they still come out on top. And ladies and gentlemen, this is coming from an HEC China caster. Honestly, I'm feeling <laughs> right at home. <laughs> We're definitely having a good time. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not for BlizzCon. This is not for mid-season brawl or anything like that. But it is for your right to play in the HGC Pro Division to get that salary, to get the opportunities to qualify for Eastern Clashes, for Mid Season Brawls, for BlizzCons in the coming year. This is what Trog are fighting for right now, and to do it, they have level 20. All right, level 20 is here for the Trogs. All they need is one more victory, as Tetris said, and they're going to be your newest Korean HEC Pro team, and Team Black would have to, to descend down into the arena, into the pits of the Open Division. Let's see, though. This boss is always a risky gamble, even when you were having a Hanzo. I think the smarter play, the safer play, oh, would there. probably be to go for the tribute, but they're playing mind games right now. They're basically predicting that Team Gluck is on the way to the tribute, trying to avoid the curse, but look at Hanzo. He's shredding that boss. Boss is down, but now they need to get down to the tribute in six Ooh. seconds to prevent the curse happening against them. Or, you know, they could just walk in top play the killer key. That seems to be the plan. That's where they're going. KCP wrapping round. If they can kill Zeratul before this fight starts, oh yes, they can. Oh Beautiful play. They're looking for Bison too. They can take this plan. Can they follow it up as we just see White Man getting bodied? But she drops the Scarlet Aegis. KCP is getting uh, completely destroyed. I think it's 1v3 because KCP goes down. He goes Eventually. down. There we go. And you know what else goes down, Tetra? I think the lives and hopes of Team Blood. Two members that Might the be. boss is pounding on that keep. And I think Might they're going to march right for the core. 
On Defender Value, MSG staying alive, but he's still going to drop in the end to Hanzo. And a beautiful root on Jada. This is their chance. If they kill Jada, that's kill all the all. damage gone. They chase him down. Jada is going to drop to Angel Wings as the rest of the team moves on to the core. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. No defenders are left alive for Team Gluck. The team that has suffered so much in this ongoing HEC career phase is going to have to say goodbye because we have the Trogs in town. And our dreams have become a reality. We're going to see a Trog logo in Korea. And look at those emotions. Finally, after so many months, Angel Wing, he's been in the Open Division for six months, and he has done it. They have achieved their dream goal. That is it. Huge congratulations. And it is so true from start to finish that Trog is best. They have made it into the HGC South Korean Pro Division. Huge congratulations to Trog is best. And all of the players, insane play, great finish. Now, Tetcher, there's one thing left for me to ask you. Um... Judging from what we've seen today and what we saw yesterday with D-Dung facing Supernova, do you think the better team made it to the Pro Division? And how would you rate uh, the chances of the Trogs maybe, you know, improving even more, maybe even becoming a solid team to be reckoned with? Just in the changes between uh, the, pro uh, the playoffs and right. today, I think that uh, Trog is best have improved so much. Whereas d -Dung didn't look like they did. If anything, mm. they fell back on a couple old weaknesses and got punished for that pretty effectively. And Supernova was a tough opponent yeah. anyway. If I was to say, like, which two teams I think deserve to be here out of the four teams in the Crucible, I think this was a very... I think this is accurate. I think this was a good trade-off. Having Supernova stay in was a pretty much a foregone conclusion. Trog, they looked so much stronger in just a short period of time between the playoffs and the Crucible. I can't wait to see what they can do with a little bit of pro scrimming under their belts once we get round to the next season. Yeah, the Trogs are definitely such an amazing and exciting team to follow because not only do they have the biceps, they basically made those games work, but they also had the brains to choose the right opponent, to choose Gluck, and then to execute those drafts very well too. They had yeah. a variety of play styles we've seen the blow up comps in game number one and two, then we saw the Karzim Garage doing wonders of work, and now I mean, just coming back against all that yeah. Wombo combo, super well done.